I would also I would also like to inform you that the chat is open and we will ask you to take action in the chat later on in the program. Uh, if you have questions to the speakers, please uh, write them in the chat and we will ask uh, the speakers if we have the possibility and time for it. Uh, so before we start with the agenda, I would like to speak about this uh, project uh, that uh, this conference is arranged within. Uh, the conference is arranged, uh, organized and funded as a part of the Interreg project Go Smart and Excel Baltic Sea region. Uh, the project focuses on transnational smart specialization strategy and uh, develop tools for internationalization and innovation at the transnational level both when it comes to policy development and how we actively and efficiently can support SMEs with their development. Uh, you will get some more information about the project and the concept tips that is developed within the project and the method uh, will be possible to use for you who are working with uh, different types of SME support activities. Uh, I would just like to highlight the partners of this project um, the coordinating partner is Bialystok University of Technology in Poland, uh, Podlaska Regional Development Foundation in Poland, Widzeme Planning Region in Latvia, Valga Town Government in Estonia, Public Institution Lithuanian Innovation Center, Kuvala Innovation Limited in Finland, Hamburg Institute of International Economics in Germany, the Baltic Institute of Finland, North Denmark EU office, and finally, RISE Research Institute of Sweden, where we are today and organizing this event. Uh, you can learn more about the project on our website. Uh, so please visit gosmartexcel.eu for more information. So gosmartexcel, in one word, .eu. So let's have a quick look at today's agenda. We have um, a number of speakers and a panel discussion waiting, as well as a uh, briefing of this project and the two tips. Uh, as you can see, we will start off with uh, our keynote speaker from Brussels, uh, follow up with uh, a speaker from Sweden, we will then have a short five minute break. We'll try to keep the timeline of the agenda, of course, but that may shift, but a short break. And then we will uh, continue with our third speaker from Italy. Uh, after that, we will have a panel discussion with four different experts and uh, finalizing the uh, agenda with uh, information about this project and the two tips. And we will end up the day with a short summary. Uh, the speakers will be uh, presented more thoroughly when they're up for grabs. So uh, let's start. And I would like to uh, introduce uh, our first out speaker and keynote speaker, Monica Zigri. Monica is deputy head of unit uh, for smart and sustainable growth at DG Regio in the European Commission. Um, you're very welcome to this conference, Monica, and we're happy to have us uh, to have you here with us today. Uh, you will speak about the importance of smart special specialization on EU level and the development ahead of us. So please take us away, Monica. Thank you uh, and good morning, uh, everyone. I will share my screen um, with you in a minute. You will have to let me know if you can see it. I hope you can, I can. Uh, so good morning and indeed I will, uh, I will um, uh, talk about smart specialization. I mean, the, the more times you have to pronounce it, the easier it gets. Yeah? It's not one of those uh, uh, short uh, um, words uh, that we usually use. Well, we can always shorten it to S3 and then get on with it. So um, 
let me start uh, by by uh, uh, let's see how that oh, very good so uh, innovation and research are more important than ever now in the as as for uh, for economic growth studies show that 60 percent uh, of growth is based on innovation to create jobs uh, maintain the standard of living uh, and address the various crises that europe and the world uh, faces now, the green and digital transition required the development of quick and widespread ad adoption of new technologies, disruptive technologies, uh, as well as a broad-based innovation technology adoption across our, our economy and society. And in this context, we need to make sure that no one is left behind. However, what we see is that there is a persistent innovation divide uh, in Europe, and there is a risk that this just gets exacerbated by the uh, pandemic. Now, this is where research and innovation is seen as a domain uh, with a particular potential to reduce these um, uh, regional disparities. Um, cohesion policy in that sense plays a key role uh, in addressing these regional disparities, differences, and boosting the innovation uh, potential uh, in the uh, in the regions. In many EU regions, the ERDF uh, itself is the main source of public funding for research and innovation. And when it comes to cohesion policy funding for research and innovation, uh, as we all know by now, smart specialization is the uh, the guiding principle. Uh, smart spe specialization is a process that brings together all the relevant uh, actors in the region together, business, uh, government, uh, re at regional and local levels, academia, and the wider uh, public. These two maps on the, on the screen are just uh, examples of, of uh, smart specialization strategies in the area of blue renewables and resource efficiency. And you can see that there are several regions that can connect uh, uh, jointly through these uh, smart specialization strategies and there is a potential of cooperation uh, between them. So smart specialization allows uh, uh, to identify the areas where these specific regions have a particular strength uh, and assets and when there are uh, potential perspectives uh, for turning in investments into innovation and later into benefits uh, for the local economy. The DG Regio has launched uh, several initiatives in the past years um, in the area of smart specialization uh, and research and innovation. It has set up uh, thematic smart specialization platforms, this in cooperation with other directorates generals, uh, one on industrial modernization, one on energy and one on agri-food. Um, there, there, there has also been a request to set up a thematic platform on blue economy so uh, with the with in cooperation with the, our colleagues in dg mara and also we have received requests uh, on a thematic uh, smart specialization platform in the area of health which is uh, as a consequence of the pandemic sounds really very uh, timely and quite a uh, logical uh, consequence now these thematic platforms provide regions the space to connect with each other pool experience and work together to address uh, the priorities in a regional context involving policymakers, researchers, business, etc., to create innovation investment opportunities. For the moment, uh, currently we have over 189 regions uh, with um, uh, involved in, in, in partnerships, and these thematic platforms hold host around, well, it's not even 33, I think we have gone up to 37 or 38 interregional smart specialization partnerships that are active on these uh, thematic platforms. Uh, now, just to look a bit in the future, I mean, smart specialization strategies have been there since at least 2014. Uh, however, for the current period, the role uh, of uh, smart specialization is reinforced, uh, as now they should only should contribute to investments not only in research and innovation, but also in the uptake of technologies, digitization, SME competitiveness, as well as development of necessary skills for smart specialization. Also, industrial transition moves to the core uh, of, this, uh, of this concept. And in addition, now smart specialization priorities uh, provide the opportunity also for more interregional cooperation and participation also in multi-country, uh, multi multi-horizon programs 
around smart specialization priorities. Now, smart specialization is also uh, a, um, a dynamic process that needs to be adapted and can be adapted as we go. Uh, a proper governance uh, of smart specialization allows uh, addressing these societal challenges, uh, such as the COVID pandemic, or also driving the investments to achieve uh, the objectives of the uh, European Green Deal or the digital transition. In order to test uh, the approaches, as, as mentioned, so now uh, cohesion policy also supports up uptake of new technologies. Uh, and in, in order to test the approaches uh, to commercialize and scale up uh, regional and local innovation, uh, and also to complement the efforts uh, done by the thematic platforms, pilot actions uh, were launched back in 2017 and also uh, last year uh, in relation to uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, the, as part of these pilots, external advisory support is provided to the partnerships uh, and, and as, as a consequence, these pilots showed significant potential to accelerate the innovation investment readiness of the interregional investment projects. Now, a key lesson learned from both the thematic platforms as well as these pilots was that there was a great deal of interest in cooperating between regions to develop common innovation projects. Uh, it was really difficult to move beyond the networking and planning uh, phases. There were also significant barriers to putting together support for firms from different programs under shared management uh, linked, to the linked to the complexity of the grant uh, agreements and state aid rules. So this is where the I3, the idea of the I3 uh, or the Interregional Innovation Investments uh, is, is coming from. It, it encourages uh, close to market investments involving innovative products and services through the deployment of new technologies or processes, uh, through the mobilization of the quadruple helix, so the whole innovation ecosystem across borders uh, and along uh, smart specialization uh, strategies. So here you, are, here you see where the, uh, when it comes to the innovation cycle, where the individual tools that we developed and we experimented with uh, fit in. So the main objective of the uh, uh, Interregional Innovation Instrument, or I3, uh, is to encourage the smart specialization partners, uh, partnerships to strengthen value chain linkages across borders and to encourage the internationalization uh, and create opportunities to cooperate at the EU level. It aims at, at supporting regional innovation through integration into these value chains and addressing barriers uh, that companies uh, may face and may prevent uh, them to uh, scale up and commercialize their innov innovative uh, products and services. Now, this would be achieved through helping the partnerships to bring together the whole quadruple helix. So this is the, the, the main target group uh, of the I3. Uh, smart specialization areas is always uh, a condition for cohesion fund, uh, cohesion policy uh, funding, and it is uh, addressing the later stages of the innovation cycle. How we intend to implement it is under direct management, so not as, uh, uh, as usual under shared management, is direct management, and the implementation of the program has been delegated to an agency, the AISMEA or the European Innovation Council and SMEs, uh, agency. We do have a, a budget uh, for the 21-27 period of around 570 million euros in current prices, uh, and this is uh, dedicated then to the um, I3 program uh, in the coming years. There is always, uh, there are always a lot of questions about how I3 uh, funding is uh, uh, um, co cooperates or complements other existing funding and whether there are overlaps. Uh, and this slide is in intends to show more or less depending on where in the innovation cycle, which are the funding instruments or support instruments uh, that are best placed uh, to support uh, the um, interregional innovation projects. As we are in a meeting uh, which, uh, is or, which has an interact um, um, uh, like to highlight what the difference uh, between traditional interact programs and the I3 is, 
is that the I3 is targeted uh, towards unlocking private sector investments with SMEs as the principal beneficiary. And a typical example, uh, for example, of, of a type of investment that was difficult to finance or fund under mainstream or interact programs is, for example, support to SMEs uh, to make use of demonstrator facilities across the border in a different country. How the I3 program looks like, uh, the main topics uh, where we are looking for uh, for proposals uh, are quite widely uh, um, uh, defined. Uh, we had a stakeholder consultation and also a discussion with an I3 expert group that was set up uh, earlier this year. So the thematic areas where the uh, where the, the I3 can support in these coming two years is digital transition, green transition, as well as smart manufacturing. The program itself is uh, composed of two main strands uh, and a smaller strand. So the two main strands are one and two. Uh, one of them is for more developed uh, partnerships uh, and regions uh, with their more developed uh, um, uh, ideas uh, or uh, investments, as well as a, uh, a strand which has a more st a stronger cohesion policy uh, dimension, which is for less developed regions. And this, uh, this second strand is also coupled with the capacity building um, element. And then the third strand uh, includes uh, technical assistance, capitalization, experimentation, and also uh, certain networking um, activities. And finally, just to sum up where, where the timeline of the uh, I3 instrument is, uh, Maybe I would uh, also highlight the, the I3 expert group that was set up. Uh, the, uh, the, the macro regional strategies uh, are there, uh, are represented as, uh, as observers in that group, so they can also follow the discussions uh, that are uh, ongoing in the, um, in the expert group. Now we are towards the very end of the preparatory phase for the I3, so the calls will be launched now in the next few weeks, within the next few weeks. Um, and uh, the, uh, the the opening of the calls uh, will be what well, the, the calls will be closed sometime early next year, and then we expect that the first uh, projects or the first grant agreements can be signed uh, from around mid 2022, autumn 2022. Uh, uh, one one interesting element still to uh, to mention on the I3 that we are also experimenting. This is the first time uh, that we. Uh, launch such a thing, just like the pilots were an experimentation to help define the I3. The I3 itself, especially during these first two years, which will be also an experiment. So feedback uh, also from you or from other stakeholders um, in, with regards to its implementation and what is difficult or what is good uh, in it is always welcome because that will help us also improve uh, the I3 program itself for the, uh, for the coming years. Well, thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, and in case you have uh, any specific questions, I'm ha very happy to uh, answer them. Thank you, Monica. Uh, a question from me first, and then we have a question from audience. Uh, when you talk about investments, uh, is this mainly this in the financial instrument when it comes to applying for different grants and projects, or is there other investments as well that you are referring to uh, when it comes to supporting the smart specialization and interregional collaboration? Uh, under investments, what we mean, um, I mean, we are talking about uh, eco innovation ecosystems and partnerships who have been already uh, who have already who have been already cooperating on certain ideas and uh, taking innovation products to services to uh, to the market so when we talk about investments is in relation to actually scale up and commercialize these ideas so based on a business case uh, already uh, prototypes uh, we assume that the prototypes have been done but then to scale up uh, there needs to be there are many activities that SMEs need to do still, uh, and then these investment projects, so a portfolio of investments is what we, uh, we help uh, fund. 
in order to leverage uh, then private uh, financing for these investments. So we are actually talking about investments to take these uh, products to, to the market. Okay, thank you. So we have uh, two questions from the audience. One, I think you can answer quite uh, shortly, if you can answer it. And that's a question from Johanna Leino. Uh, uh, she's wondering, the info day on I3 has been postponed. Is there a new date already for this info day? Uh, now we have, uh, we had a major breakthrough yesterday. Uh, so what we see is that, the, uh, well, uh, it has to still be confirmed, uh, but now the, the launch of the calls is planned for the uh, last week of November, around the 22nd, 23rd of November. So we'll see. And the info day should then happen at the beginning of December. Okay, thank you. Info day in the beginning of December. We are noting that. And then uh, the a more uh, complex question from uh, Santa Vitola. The, uh, she's uh, writing that. The map for S3 platform showed that uh, for several countries, especially in the uh, Baltic Sea region, many regions have joined. But for some countries, there is only engagement from a uh, national level. How could regions be more engaged in these platforms? Can, uh, can that be independently done from the regions? Uh, or is that a process that has to go through the national level? Uh, when it comes to smart specialization uh, and also the question of regions, some of the uh, some of the countries themselves are considered as one region uh, due to their sizes. So they th this is why you see whole countries identified as a region with a smart specialization strategy. Uh, so for those uh, for those countries, there is no lower level uh, uh, structure. Uh, that will be, but I mean, in those cases, you you do have the um, the the well, the national level, which size-wise probably fits quite well with the other regions across Europe. For example, um, Slovenia is one region because of the uh, of the size of the country, and that can also happen also in the uh, in the Baltic Sea region. Great, thank you, thank you, Monica. Um... We are moving ahead with the next speaker, but before that, uh, we would like to engage you in the audience a bit. Uh, we uh, have two questions we would like you to answer. Uh, so please uh, get ready to be a bit active and find the chat in the Zoom tool. Uh, we would like you to, to answer two questions by writing them directly, your answer di directly in the chat. So first question, you please write number one before your answer. Which country and region are you from? And uh, the second question is what smart specialization focus areas does your region have? So uh, please write down these to answers for us. If you don't know uh, the spawn specialization area, that's okay as well, um, because it's interesting for us to see uh, how well um, connected you are with your smart specialization strategies and how the knowledge is spread in your region. We have a lot of answers coming in. So let's see now. We have um, people from all over Europe connecting. Um, in different regions from different countries as well. Some uh, clearly know uh, specifically and exactly all the different smart specialization areas uh, and some uh, as well are 
close to each other in different countries. Great. Uh, so, as it seems, many of our audience uh, have a connection and, and uh, knowledge about their uh, smart specialization area for their region. As you all can see when you are writing in the chat, you can probably recognize some of them uh, because that's uh, the same area that your region or, or your, your neighboring region has a focus area. And hopefully uh, we now have learned more uh, about each other and ourselves as well during this process. Great. Thank you for all the answers. It was really interesting to see. And of course, you can uh, scroll the chat and, and learn more about each other now. Great. Uh, it's time for our next speaker. Uh, we will shift now the larger EU perspective to a more uh, nationally focused perspective on S3. Uh, between 2016 and 2020, the Swedish government assigned a mission to the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth to support the regions in Sweden regarding their development of smart specialization strategies. Uh, now the work has been finalized by the agency and uh, evaluated as well. And there are interesting findings from that uh, re report that has been generated. Uh, therefore, our next speaker is Madeleine Nilsson. She is the Senior Advisor of Innovation and Smart Specialization at the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth. And she will talk about uh, the establishment of smart specialization in Sweden, uh, lessons learned and the way forward. Hello, Madeleine. Hello there, and uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm so happy to see that we're right on schedule in this conference. Yeah, <laughs> we try our best. Uh, <laughs> take it away. Thank you so much. And just uh, let me start. You've already mentioned my name, Madeleine Nilsson. And so I work at a Swedish agency, uh, and I've been responsible for the work with smart specialization and with that assignment uh, at the agency. Uh, I will go into the structure of smart specialization in, in, um, in Sweden in just a moment. Just let me start off by saying that, of course, we've, we've finished the work with exactly that uh, assignment, but we're not finished at all with the work with smart specialization in Sweden. So just let me make that uh, clear. Uh, so I will share um, the presentation. Just let me know if this works. It can looks you see my good, but you can uh, share the presentation mode now. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so, okay, um, uh, I will just uh, jump into the first uh, uh, presentation sh uh, here. And of course, like you already said in the presentation, uh, we've had a national assignment uh, to the agency from the Swedish government to uh, to kind of join the national work with smart specialization in Sweden. Because uh, as I will go into, the structure is quite decentralized in our country. I know that there are a lot of other countries where you have a, a smart specialization strategy for the whole country, but this is not the case here. We have uh, 21 different regions within Sweden, and of course, you know, we're not that many people, so it's a, quite a decentralized organization for smart specialization in Sweden. Uh, and with this 20, 21 different strategies, uh, a lot of coordination uh, has to be done uh, in terms to make this work effective and more effective. Um, so this, I think this was part of the background to why the, the, this assignment was, uh, was uh, given to uh, the agency. Um, 
And it was, uh, this is a translation to English then, to support regional authorities because it's the 21 regions who are responsible in each and have the authority in each region for, for the work with the innovation strategies and smart specialization strategies and so forth, regional development plans. Uh, to support regional authorities with their work with smart specialization and to diffuse knowledge and experience from this work. Uh, so uh, a lot of the assignment and what we have done is also to learning by doing and sharing this among peers uh, within the country and uh, between different regions. And just a short notice, the Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth is a national agency tasked with promoting entrepreneurship and regional growth. And we work proactively to strengthen the competitiveness of Swedish enterprises. And of course, this is why uh, it's quite natural to give this assignment, assignment to this agency. And uh, we are also responsible, we are the managing authority for the ERDF, uh, so the, the work with the ERDF programs in Sweden. So, of course, this is a kind of the a background picture that I think most of you know, but for, for us, this is the background because since we are the managing authority, we have also seen the development uh, from the ERDF uh, 2014 to 2020, where the focus was more on ex the existence of a strategy. And now uh, this uh, coming or present period, 21 to 27, more in implementation and governance of the strategy. So, of course, at least during the year of uh, 2020 and also uh, into the year 2021, I think a lot of you recognize this if you are from another country, that we've been working a lot with the different fulfillment criteria to fulfill the criteria for the enabling condition for small specialization in the ERDF, uh, the, the PO1. And uh, since there are different, also in terms of ERDF structure in Sweden is quite decentralized, uh, at least compared to some of the other countries, uh, we have eight different uh, program areas. Uh, and they have all been uh, working with this. And from the agency side, we have been uh, supporting this. And of course, you'll know the parts of working with S3. It consists of a lot of uh, um, measures to, uh, have a functioning entrepreneurial discovery process and also actions to improve both, both national and regional research and innovation system. Um, and a lot of uh, transformational actions. What, the, what are the gaps? What needs to be done uh, to change industry, industries into more sustainable industries and to also to, uh, to uh, boost and uh, dis discover the uh, the the uh, possibilities with the collaboration both with other Swedish regions but of course with regions all over Europe for example uh, and this has not been uh, easy it's uh, a lot of things that uh, stakeholders in Sweden want to do but it's not so easy to make it happen in real life as a lot of you know uh, but it, a lot of the the work the the past two years I would say has been uh, connected to the programming for this and uh, while the work of smart specialization has been has continued to move on in terms of the strategy work and making roadmaps from the strategy strategies so also the programming of erdf to be able to continue the the enabling of of the the to make the strategies come true has been a lot of work the past two years i would say so just uh this is a picture from the website that our agency has. And as you can see uh, on the map, there, are, there there's Sweden and uh, the different 21 regions. So of course they are different, both in sizes and, and also in, in climate and in distances uh, within innovation um, stakeholders within the region. Of course, a lot of, um, there are a lot of differences in how many people live and how many uh, business SMF, uh, small and medium sized uh, companies and also big countries, uh, companies there are in each region. So they differ. Uh, but of course, some things are alike also. And, uh, and uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say what the, what the representatives from the region have said in, in terms of evaluating the 
small specialization work in Sweden uh, in just a moment, but I just wanted to give you a picture of um, a crash course in Swedish, if you look at the left, of course, if you don't know Swedish already. Uh, and, uh, and to the right there, I have just with, made an example of one of the regions called Östergötland. So you can see if you, uh, if you um, click on that region, you, you see it in terms of just uh, short uh, notice, you can see the smart specialization uh, priorities in that region. And this is the case for all of the regions. So you can move your pointer all over the map and you can see on a headline uh, perspective, you can see what, uh, what priorities they've, they've made. And uh, one thing that is clear is that regions are not only uh, both alike and different, but uh, they have also uh, had uh, different approaches in what, what type of priorities they have chosen. And so, uh, for example, it can be, uh, the approach can be both in terms of a meeting global or regional or national challenges in society. Uh, and how, what kind of competences do we have to meet them? But it can also be more on a, te on a technical scale. Uh, what, what kind of uh, competences and abilities do we have in, in, our, in, the, business, in the small and medium-sized companies in our region? Or what kind of international value chains are we part of? Uh, so some regions have chosen, I would say, broader uh, priorities. Uh, some have chosen very, very sharp, uh, internationally competitive, uh, small niches. And uh, also the direction of them is uh, both, some have chosen more technical ones, some have chosen more uh, in terms of uh, transformation in, into sustainability. I would say that that's overall, you can read about that in, in a lot of the, uh, of the, of the strategies. So, so uh, there is a, a quite a, uh, colorful blooming garden in terms of uh, interpretation of what kind of priorities is good in a in a smart specialization strategy uh, so just that so you, now you know there's 21 different strategies in, within sweden so you understand wh why i will talk a little bit about coordination <laughs> in a moment so what has our national agency done then uh, let me start from the left here. We have had a, a S3 network. We've had a lot of dialogue with the regions, uh, both in connecting, I would say most of the work has been, has been to connect regions with each other and also, of course, with us and other national uh, agencies. Uh, we've arranged conferences, meetings, uh, peer reviews is a way forward that we have used quite a lot. Um, for example, one region has presented their work before the smart specialization is uh, officially decided. They, they have presented it in the S3 network so that they can get peers from other regions to look at them and come with the uh, questions uh, to clarify things or learning by doing we have done this and our experience is this so a lot of exchange uh, of um, of experience i would say uh, we've also had uh, contact with the eu commission and different uh, stakeholders in, within the eu and also the of course the civilian platform in terms of smart specialization we've also participated in some research work uh, led by the Sevilla platform. And this way we've tried to distribute the knowledge and be a link to the regions in Sweden. Uh, we've also had a lot of um, contacts with other, uh, with the national ministry, of course, and also other national agencies. Uh, we've also had contact with, uh, and this has been more uh, accentuated, the, the, the previous years now with the stakeholders like Business Sweden uh, who are, are, have a lot of contact with, of course, in the different international markets outside of Sweden. So um, that's also, that's not an agency in Sweden, but it's a national, uh, national stakeholder. Uh, we've also, if you look in the middle of the picture, just above the very yummy cake, uh, we have also had a, a, a cluster pilot uh, to strengthen uh, approximately 20 uh, 
clusters of di in different business areas, business fields. Uh, but they, each cluster has been regionally prioritized uh, and connect, is connected and important in that, that particular region's S3. Uh, so um, it, it has been going on until now, so that is quite finalized now. And that has also been, the, the, the pilot is also a lot about learning from other cluster leaders and of course they are working very closely with uh, small and medium-sized companies a lot of micro and small companies i would say um, and uh, in sweden we don't have a lot of medium-sized we have a lot of micro and small and very large companies but we're we're trying to boost <laughs> the the medium we're growing into the medium in that in the scale of largeness in the companies. Uh, so the, the cluster pilot has been a lot on workshops uh, to um, professionalize and also boost the work within the S, within pilots, clusters, clusters, not pilots, but clusters. And of course, on the right side, as you can see, we've been working a lot with, uh, with um, uh, I see, oh, I have not translated some of the words. You will have crash course in Swedish again. Um, we have been working a lot, of course, with ERDF, both the, in the because this uh, this assignment started in 2016. So we've been working both with the the past uh, program periods and also because, uh, of course, with the coming one now. Uh, a lot of um, collaboration and coordination work in in Sweden. There are eight regional ERDF programs, but there's also one national one. A national ERDF program and of course which in the national one we're trying to link where you have innovation uh, or uh, business development in different parts of the country that uh, is good to connect with each other we try to do that in the national one okay just uh, that was kind of a background and a theory and what this assignment assignment about so I would say that S3 in practice um, it, on national level, since we have 21 different ones in Sweden, it's a lot of a lot on uh, on coordination and learning among the the regions, and also coordinating coordinating different things, coordinating knowledge transfer, coordinating information, connecting people with each other, connecting regions and clusters with each other and uh, I would say nobody has the really answer on how to do this so we're learning by doing all the time and I've already said this several times that the strategies in Sweden there are they are on a regional level and um, wh what we're working with uh, of course is to discover where are the gaps for the most efficient uh, national and regional innovation ecosystems uh, this fall, at, at the moment now, we are, uh, some, some regions have already done this, but there are a lot of regions who have not yet uh, converted the strategies into what has to be done uh, in real life, what has to be done in terms of action plans and roadmaps. So we're working this fall a lot with uh, together, peer to peer, and also we have an expert, Dominic Foray, who, who's, um, we, have, we have also involved in this work to convert the strategies into uh, more uh, uh, hand, hands-on roadmaps and uh, action plans. And also we're trying to discover now uh, more and more what's, how can we work with complementary cooperation uh, and to strengthen what, what, is, what, has been, what, what is being done in different regions. How can we cooperate in a more complementary way? And of course, this also has to do with the cooperation outside the countries with other European stakeholders, for example. So I would say this is, this is uh, some of the, th this is working practice at the moment. And as you, when you, uh, presented me, um, you, you just said that uh, <laughs> we've done this work, but I would say it's, co it's a continuous work and this is what, what is happening in practice at the moment. Uh, just a few examples of it. So a few words of the evaluation that has been done and it's been done from an external firm uh, called Oxford Research. Um, and they have been involving stakeholders, of course, interviewed a lot of people in the regions and also at national level. But I would say the, 
the emphasis has been on the regional uh, regional uh, representatives, of course, because they are the target group from for the assignment that we've had. Uh, so this evaluation is of the assignment and not not uh, all of the work, but of the assignment. Um, and one thing that is clear is that for the regional representatives, the the network. Uh, the knowledge and experience sharing between peers is highly appreciated um, and that's uh, both connected to the S3 network and the national conferences and they have they have uh, experienced them as very very useful. Uh, I would say that that is uh, something that is um, that's the most clear uh, both in our own evaluation and in the evaluation done by, the, by Oxford Research. Um, learning from others, learning by good examples, learning from uh, experience, what, what does not work, uh, where are the obstacles, uh, how can you approach them, and also learning from others in terms of, okay, you have also found this difficult, uh, then we can try to discover uh, solutions together. So learning from others have been a very, and also discussion, does, this coaching of, among peers has been very, very uh, appreciated. As I've already mentioned, um, the evaluation also uh, states that there are very different approaches to how you prioritize, what, what, how to, um, how to uh, formulate the, the prioritizations and the difference between different regions. I've already talked a little bit about this. And they also ask for clear definition and national direction of smart specialization in, in Sweden. Uh, not not all of them, but some. That's uh, something that we're working on right now. So that was my pictures, and uh, I just wrote a colleague's name here also, since I will move on to another work uh, at the end of this year. I will start at the innovation agency in Sweden uh, called Binova. Uh, but uh, until December, you can write me at the email here. So thank you so much for uh, for listening, and I hope I, something has been useful for you. All. Thank you, Madeleine. Um, a question then about uh, the things you have discussed. It's interesting uh, to listen on the, the development of the S3 work in Sweden. And uh, I was wondering, with this knowledge and insights that you have uh, got gathered now when it comes to S3, uh, what possibilities do you see for using this to connect uh, stakeholders on a European level? Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I would say that that is, it's already been started, of course, but at the moment, that's one of the things that we're really um, <clears throat> exploring the possibilities with right now. Uh, it, it, it's not starting now, it's been going on for 10 years, of course, at least. But um, I would say that the, there are a lot of possibilities. And of course, from a national level, we see that there are a lot of po possibilities um, not not at least within the, the the Swedish country itself, and of course the same possibilities uh, is with other regions and countries uh, um, uh, among Europe. So um, I think that we shouldn't underestimate the value of um, the clarity in the priorities. Uh, the, just the possibilities that we can have website, and I know there is a European website, of course, for, uh, where you can also search for uh, short headline words that can give you a, a sense of direction. Okay, where are the em where's the emphasis in this region? What what kind of stakeholders will, and businesses and innovation stakeholders will I find in this region? Of course, it's not the whole truth. It's not the whole picture. And you have to go deep, uh, deeper to find the, the collaborative, the best and if it must, uh, the, the best uh, collaborative partners. But it's at least it's on a top on a overview level. It's very, very, very valuable. Uh, so I think it's a lot of hard work for <laughs> everybody who's been involved in the in the development of a, of a smart specialization strategy knows that it's it's not easy to do this prioritization, but the price is on the other side, that the clarity also helps a lot in 
from both, a, I would say, a, I would guess a regional level, but of course, from a national level, it's a very good, there's a lot of possibilities in the clarity that you can, you can actually see, okay, here is a region that uh, they're going for this three areas or five areas. So I think we're, we're just in the, in the beginning of exploring the possibilities of making good connections and work more effectively with the European value chain. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, one thing that uh, Monica said during her speech and that I recognize when you talked about that, uh, she said that when it comes to this development of S3, in a European level, there's a lot of networking and that's important and it was very successful and appreciated to network with uh, between regions and so on, but it was hard to move the process forward to actually uh, continue working more uh, operationally with the strategies. And you mentioned that as well, that, that this is more the next step. Um, why do you think that's the case on both European and, and Swedish level? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I would say that on a business level for, for a certain company, of course, uh, it's the, the road forward is quite clear. You want to find business partners who can enhance your, your own company's uh, business. It's quite easy, um, but it's not easy to do in real life, you have to find them, you have to know, uh, are we strong enough to do this and so forth. Um, I, I think uh, some things are already been, has, has already been done. Um, it's not like we're starting from scratch, but I think that the complex, uh, it's the complex uh, world, I think. Uh, there's not, and, and we're also, uh, we're aiming for a moving target all the time. I mean, the, the international market in different places and the, uh, the same sustainability work that we need to do doesn't stop just so we can sit down in our desks and think and do the perfect drawing. We're, we're also aiming for a moving, to moving target all the time. I think a lot of, t a lot of uh, dif uh, difficulties has to, be, uh, has to do with um, coordinating. The, the, the pure log logistics of coordinating things. Uh, the right people, the right stakeholders in the right meeting at the same time, uh, being able to take a decision and everybody has to go home and the decision has to be taken in another room and then you have to get back together. And then there is this time scale um, logistics questions all the time. So I think it has, has to do with that. And of course, leadership in different political organizations, uh, not to mention state aid. We need to also, also find ways to do this in, in relation to stated issues and, and the co-financing. So it's a lot of logistics, I would say, and also sometimes regulatory uh, rules that we need to, to uh, navigate within. Thank you. So now it's uh, time for a short break. Uh, I can see that the clock is uh, uh, 9.56, so we're on schedule. Um, welcome back, 10.01. So five minute break and, and we're starting 10.01 sharp.
Hi, and welcome back. Uh, we have gotten a question from Tobian regarding the presentations for today and if those will be shared. We will uh, ask the presenters if it's okay to share them. Uh, I guess that won't be a problem. And when they respond to us, we will send out the presentations uh, as a PDF to all the people registered for this event. Uh, so, uh, welcome back. Hopefully you have uh, gotten yourself a new, fresh, hot cup of coffee and uh, are eager to learn more about smart specialization and the uh, transnational collaboration. Um, for this next speaker, we will uh, leave our macro region surrounding the Baltic Sea and move south to the Adriatic Sea, and more specifically, Italy. Uh, with us today, we have Elena Banci, uh, project manager at Area Science Park in Trieste, Italy. Uh, Elena and the Area Science Park have participated in multiple interreg projects uh, focusing on smart specialization and have been involved in different EU macro regions when uh, conducting these projects. Uh, so they have a lot of useful experience about transnational collaboration to share. And the topic of Elena's talk is how to succeed in transnational collaborations, experience from different uh, macro regional S3 projects. So, Elena, what experience do you have from S3 in a macro-regional context? And what have been important lessons for successful collaboration? Good morning. Area Science Park is currently involved in four projects dealing with the definition of S3 at macro-regional level. In particular, two projects uh, are working on the user area, and one is based on the um, user of macro-region. Macro-regional level, due to the lack of homogeneous computation and to the different wording used to classify the specialization areas or project lists. Then, but here referring only to the uh, Adriatic and Union macro region, working on the macro uh, regional S3 had an additional effect uh, on the capacity building of local public officials. As you know, in the user macro region, uh, there are five. Uh, members out of nine countries, which are EU, uh, non EU members. These are Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Serbia, and North Macedonia. And here, the definition of S3 is not so mature in some cases. Some countries um, have adopted their S3 in 2019, something similar, but there are still today some territories where the adoption of the S3 is still ongoing. Thanks to these projects, local public officials had the experience of uh, benefiting from, from working in a larger framework where the innovation policies are shaped uh, by particular players and with a well structured approach. And this is very important. Going to answer to your questions by means of presentation that appeared right for this event. Let me see again for screen. Uh, you can see that. So, as I said before, Alison Spark is engaged in four different um, territory cooperation projects. Two of them was the MUA project are funded by the Agent program, so they insist on the um, a user uh, map region. One of them is um, a ring, which is the which belong to the uh, Alpine space region. And that is the fourth one is called Blue Biomed and it is funded by the MED program. All of them are uh, involved in different way with the macro regional flow approach. So this, by means of this slide, uh, you can see the, the, the linkages and the overlap between the four projects. All of them are dealing with mass association strategy analyzed at macro regional approach. 
separately they deal with other things where the project that they will show you uh, in the next slide is the one we are coordinating right now it's an, uh, an ongoing project and it deals with new growth with there which is uh, which is a concluded project it ended in uh, december 2020 um, dealt with technology transfer activities emotion vouchers and so on Airing is ongoing, it's an uh, advanced based project dealing with governance mainly and of course uh, RI activity. Then the environment deals with a new bioeconomy and uh, uh, it's in this case, it's linkages between the S3 uh, with the sustainable development goals. So, why? In our projects, we are um, investigating the collaborations, uh, the macro-regional collaborations in S3. Um, cooperation in S3 at macro-regional level can support policymakers, which are the key target group of our project, too. Explore how national and regional S3 priorities differentiate, complement their neighboring countries and regions. Uh, create strategic linkages to tackle common challenges, uh, exploit value chains activities through cross-cluster and cross-regional cooperation, and then stimulate transnational cooperation in areas of smart facilitation. Um, this slide shows you a lesson learned from the OSER project concluded last year. Um, in this project, we have analyzed, we have performed a pilot macro regional S3 analysis for the uh, Adriatic Ionian region by means starting from the uh, smart sensitization strategies, the available smart sensitization strategies um, that were handed over by the, the countries involved or uh, just downloaded by the S3 platform. They were categorized, then aligned with the uh, four user thematic pillars. We uh, have met immediately some limitations in our investigations. The first one was this one. No homogeneous wording of the definitions of the priority areas or trajectories. So this causes a need, a strong need for territorial validation. Okay, for example, ICT priority hides, um, is hidden, is, is hiding, sorry, uh many many specific topics so we had to go low and detail and analyze if under that um say wide category there was the sector we were searching for then another limitation is that s3 have a multi-level structure and this means that analysis should take into consideration also low specialization area levels Now I'm going to present you the project we are now coordinating. That's named Blue Air, Blue Globe Smart, Adriatic Ionian S3. So this project will last until May 2023. It's funded by the Interreg uh, Agile program. And its main objective is that of improving the competencies of the quadruple edit sectors in defining effective innovation policies on blue growth. Then to identify the blue growth sectors of macro regional interest and exploit potentials for transnational cooperation. And then to support the development of a macro regional S3 on blue growth. Here again, you, you can see that the big relevance of analyzing uh, and defining a macro regional S3 on a specific sector. The partnership is very wide, composed by 11 partners and 20 associate partners with many ministries, regional administrations, port authorities, and so on. And uh, by means of this partnership, we are covering almost all the Adriatic Ionian territory. The partnership is composed by innovation agencies, public administrations, universities, and channel of economy, and is coordinated by RS and Spark. So the main activities are the following. Investigation on blue growth innovation policies, which is ongoing. Some results are already obtained in this um, field of activity. Then the development of capacity building activities, 
the development of S3 decision making supporting tools such as the macro regional S3 on the growth, the technology foresight. Then we will perform uh, some pilot and entrepreneurial discovery processes in eight different um, administrations. So we will go there and support the public officials and the policy makers in defining um, the uh, idea. A EDP process and defining also some uh, niche, some market and technological niche where to invest. And then organization of several capitalization events uh, within the area, the macro region, and also outside. These activities, of course, will contribute to the achievement of these results. Going now to the general, to, to know the lesson learned we got from all of these four projects. So we can say now, till now, that uh, macro regional expert analysis are difficult to perform. And we saw that this, we, we met this problem in all the projects we were involved. Macro regional SP are particularly important for non-EU countries placed in the US, uh, US area, as I said before, to support the adoption of structural innovation policy schemes based on the engagement of four Alex players. Is emerged particularly in this area. There is a problem with the governance. Many innovation stakeholders, and here um, the main one is the private representatives from the private sector, are still not well aware about the concept and relevance of S3. In this respect, some awareness campaigns should be organized well in advance or as a continuing process. Then there is the need for facilitating the joint transition of all the macro region to a knowledge-based innovation policies. And this uh, need can be let's say, satisfied by means of a market and technology forecast referred to specific areas, referred to specific sectors. I would like to highlight by, by means of this slide some uh, mm, results of a study uh, of an analysis conducted by the University um, Polytechnical University of Marke, Università Politecnica delle Marche, and referred to the interconnections and overlapping between S3 and user pillars in 2014-2020. So, differently from what we expect, only the 25%, more or less, of S3 specialization areas uh, was associated with one of the user pillars and topics. So, uh, this very uh, few range of, uh, let's say, overlapping areas. And uh, this opens up to a question, which will be the role of the US a user macro regional strategies and user macro regional strategy in this case in the S3 in the next programming period. Here things must change, of course. So, this is my let's say uh, conclusion. Uh, these are my let's say a wish list, sort of let's say wishing list uh, of uh, things that should, according to us, happen. Uh, in the next programming period, uh, um, the, the strategies will uh, set some new challenges also for the macro regional territories. It will be very, very interesting to see if the new um, smart facilitation strategies uh, will embed the pillars of the macro regional strategies in their uh, trajectories, in their strategic areas. Um, and this issue should emerge right at the definition stage, not later. So we really uh, strongly support the embedding of these um, the strategies in an effective way, in an explicit way. Sustainability issue. How many territories will shift from the S3 to the S4 concept? Let's see. Then, uh, with reference to the new funding instrument of the Interregional Innovation Investment, I3 instrument, will macro regional S3 play any role in uh, supporting collaboration in joint applications between territories sharing the same S3 or value chains? 
Uh, well, let's see. We will try, as I said, Spark, as coordinator of uh, or as partner of this project, to uh, participate, to map first, and also to participate to other activities, and also try to also to apply for the international innovation investment um, funds through our um, networks, the networks that uh, have been launched or are, are, let's say, in the process of, of being launched or of these projects, such as the OISM network already established and composed by 13 partners and also by the Blue Innovation Community, Blue Biomed Innovation Alliance that will be um, launched very soon. So this is all from on my side, on my side, I remain available if you want also, you can contact me by email. I very well. Thank you, thank you also for the invitation. So, Hopefully the sound worked better now, so you can hear Elena Banchi and the interesting uh, experiences from working in different uh, macro regions and different projects. Uh, excuse us for the technical issues. Uh, now we will move on. Um, we are not longer following the timeline exactly but we're close by we're just two minutes uh, late the next part of our agenda and program is uh, the panel discussion so with us we have uh, four different experts uh, from different areas and countries um, I would like to present them to you now, uh, one by one. So, uh, first out is uh, Erika Augustinsson. Uh, she's an innovation strategist uh, working at the regional uh, growth uh, at Region Blekinge. Hey, Erika. Hello. Hello. Great to see you. Uh, Next up is uh, Torbjörn Jonsson. He's a project manager and smart specialization expert at the Research Institute of Sweden and uh, Propel. Hello, Torbjörn. Yeah, great. Hello. Um, with us, we also have um, Melanie Messler, uh, project expert in Go Smart and Excel BSR and researcher at Hamburg Institute of International Economics. Hello, Melanie. Good morning. Good morning. And last but not least, we have Esa Kokonen, director of the Baltic Institute of Finland uh, and PA Innovation Coordinator. Hello, Esa. Hello, hello, uh, Erwin and everyone. Nice to nice, nice to meet you. you. Great. So uh, we will now have a panel discussion um, with the the of course objectives to see your thoughts and and, uh, and experiences when it comes to smart specialization and the transnational uh, collaboration. Uh, we would like to start off by asking you individually a question per, per person and then have a more group discussion and, and uh, reflections regarding different areas of smart specialization. Uh, we will start off with Erika. So Erika, um, in Region Blekinge, you are working actively with smart specialization. You have experience from uh, uh, working with that, uh, with international uh, partners and collaborating with other regions. 
And as I know, you are trying to have a different approach for smart specialization by working more mission oriented. Could you please uh, tell us a bit more about what this actually means and how you are doing this? Well, we had a, a discussion since a lot of our stakeholders that we have worked with in our entrepreneurial process, discovery process, they were very, most of them are very interested in sustainability. And uh, within the S3 so far, there's been not enough focus on sustainability. So when this new tool uh, arrived a little bit from the, from the European Commission on how to also work with mission-oriented innovation, we uh, uh, looked into this and realized that the smart specialization instrument is a lot like the, the mission-oriented instruments that they're talking about. It's place-based, it's focused on how can we work with, uh, in, within a, in a regional context? So we decided to uh, uh, merge the two uh, instruments, basically. So we're uh, in our smart specialization strategy. We're also working with the, the five uh, appointed missions that the European Commission has, uh, has uh, launched a few weeks ago. So we try to uh, basically... Uh, 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 work, apply the knowledge that we have within our smart specialization areas, which is smart industry and tech, uh, and apply the knowledge that we have there to uh, uh, a few of the missions that the, the commission has launched. So we work with healthy oceans and climate uh, adaptation, the two missions. So that's uh, how we are working with also the sustainability dimension within the S3. Great, thank you. Uh, interesting to hear. Uh, now over to Turbjörn. Uh, you personally and your uh, unit at RISE has uh, quite a lot of experience when it comes to collaborating uh, with other partners in the Baltic Sea region uh, in different uh, bigger or smaller uh, innovation projects and development projects. Uh, what would you say uh, is that makes you successful uh, for being uh, often mentioned as a partner in these, these projects? First of all, uh, I have background sound. I'll do whatever I can to keep the small as possible. I just changed places. Um, I think our basic idea is that we go into these smart specialization projects and, and interact projects, uh, but we don't go in them just uh, for doing uh, connections, connections between uh, and networking projects to network between between clusters and network between organizations. But we do we do it by going in to do to do business, uh, and and in projects where we generate. Uh, uh, business for real and we, we generate uh, the connections that we make and and and, uh, and um, um, so it, it's not between the clusters and so on and between the organization but it, it is between the SMEs uh, so we really really generate business like for example one one thing we did that last week we were at the world congress in Dubai that was a delegation with three clusters uh, Estonia Latvia and Sweden <laughs> And in these uh, clusters, we also brought some 50 um, SME people uh, from some 30 organizations and, and really, really did good networking. Of course, in UAE, uh, India and Africa, which were the target countries, but I would say they did more business uh, between themselves and, the organ and, and there between their organizations. So they, it was really, really good networking over the Baltic Sea as well. And I think this is why we are mentioned, but and also why we are uh, lifted um, at at the yearly conferences and so on. For example, Central Baltic yearly conferences, uh, because we get good results and we deliver on the KPIs in the projects. Uh, but that is why we choose projects and why we work with projects that actually deliver for the SMEs. So we focus on on on. Focus on the SMEs and by net and giving the SMEs uh, possibilities to network uh, uh, more than between the organizations. 
Great. Thank you, Tobian. Uh, next up, Melanie. So uh, as a, a, a researcher at the Humber Institute of International Economics, you often have the macro perspective, uh, looking at uh, uh, aggregated data uh, and uh, doing these types of studies. When you have uh, worked with uh, the S3 perspective, would you say that you have found uh, interesting or not uh, uh, expected gaps in how the S3 uh, should work, but it isn't working or something like that? That's a good question. Um, to answer your question, I would uh, like to highlight that we didn't really look or search for gaps, but we're more interested in finding differences in, for example, the different approaches by region, by regions and nations, how to yeah, develop S3 and how to continue and how to actually put S3 into practice. And I think it's really interesting for regions and stakeholders to learn from each other. And that's why our work in the international projects is really important as I see it, because yeah, it is a great opportunity if we as our institute uh, have this holistic um, point of view to detect differences in the S3 approaches and how it's conducted within the different in micro regions. Because I think it's a great opportunity to detect opportunities for uh, yeah, learning from each other and for interaction and synergies. Great, thank you. Um, Esa, you like to talk about investments. So when you have learned more and studied S3 in the macro regions, uh, what, uh, and as, as we heard Monica in her opening speech uh, talked about uh, the, the funding uh, coming up uh, in, in the future from the EU, uh, what crucial investments are needed for the continuous development of S3, would you say? Yeah, thank you. Uh, obviously, there are a great number of, of investment uh, uh, opportunities uh, for, for interregional investment opportunities in, in, in different uh, smart specialization, uh, common smart specialization uh, priorities in the Baltic Sea region. It's, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 uh, to somehow even, even summarize them, them all. But the, in general level, what is important is that, that uh, first of all, we need to uh, move uh, kind of a up in the ladder, ladders of, 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 of uh, BSR cooper, uh, cooperation. Uh, and between the regions and in the framework of smart specialization. And that, that uh, also in, in Monica's presentation that was uh, illustrated this, this different uh, kind of a, uh, steps from learning phase to connect phase uh, to, to then to demonstrations and commercialization and scaling up. So of course we have been very, very uh, uh, active in, in these early steps already for a for, uh, long time. And even before smart specialization, we, we uh, had a very active cluster collaboration uh, for, for since basically since uh, late nineties in the region uh, in, in, in different leading clusters. And there are already well-established networks and, and, uh, and uh, uh, in, 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 in different sectors, but about the investment. So, uh, it's, uh, it was already mentioned that it's, uh, it's also about very much about, uh, uh, somehow using the, using, uh, effectively and using transnationally the innovation assets, uh, and, and R and D, uh, assets of the region. So we need to open, uh, uh, opportunities for our, our, uh, companies to, 
to utilize the, the, the test uh, facilities uh, across borders, like Monica was, was uh, mentioning. And that's already something that, whether it's in the framework of, of digital innovation hubs and their networks and collaboration, or whether it's in the framework of, of uh, uh, regional uh, cooperation between regional business development agencies, like in, in GoSmart, uh, BSR and its uh, 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 transnational innovation brokerage, brokerage uh, service. Those are kind of a uh, uh, innovation uh, infrastructure and service related investment that we need to, to mainstream, that we have been piloting and developing them, but they are not mainstreamed yet. It's, they are not part of the everyday services uh, that are available for companies. They have been available in pilots of the projects. So that's already, that kind of a requires regional investments to, 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 to transnational collaboration. Great, thank you. So when uh, talking about this, that uh, we need to move forward to start mainstreaming these types of services. I would like to ask Turbjörn, you who have been involved in these different types of a cluster project and smart specialization and worked more uh, business oriented with SMEs. What ESA is saying, how do we do that actually in practice? How do we get SMEs to uh, engage in this? Uh, because um, as, as ESA and Monica and Madeleine has all said, we have done good work when it comes to S3 and preparing and setting up uh, the standards and so on. But now when we need to actually get, uh, get efficient and use our resources, there's, there's a, a, a bridge uh, that needs to be passed. So what do you think when you have the more of a SME perspective uh, when it comes to that? Well, first of all, I would like to be a little bit positive, uh, seeing the programming uh, for 21-27 uh, for the interregs uh, looks good, I would say. <laughs> they are being more and more precise. They are going more and more into, into delivery, uh, not only setting up structures, but it, 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 it's, the programming is, is really going the delivery way. So that as first I think that that's a good circumstance system to, that will actually make it happen um, then uh, we need you need to, to set up uh, good projects uh, from this from this programming and from from these these calls that will come out of the interex um, you need to have good partners uh, first of all you have you may have some old partners or if you don't there there are good matching possibilities but you have to really have to choose you have to to, 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 you have to set up the winning team. You have to have good partners. Uh, there are cultural differences, even though we think that countries are the same and we meet when we do the networking and so on, we, we really don't see the cultural differences between, because we all seem to be the same. Uh, but when, when we meet the companies, we are not the same. Uh, there are cultural differences also between, uh, also in this, this small sea, uh, the Baltic Sea. Uh, so this has to be overcome. Uh, it's possible, of course, it's not even difficult, but you have to have good partners <laughs> that actually we can do this together. Um, and then the most tricky part that, has, that is to actually attract the SMEs. Um, it sounds like it's easy. You have a good program and they have, you have financing possibilities, you have processes, looks good, uh, enough for you can't refuse. But uh, the SMEs can't, can really refuse uh, because um, they have a day-to-day -day business to handle as well, so they they have to they have to be attracted to actually join and to do this with us, um, and that is the tricky part of the project, uh, and that that is also very necessary to have to have good partners, uh, which have a good network of SMEs, and, and that really can attract the SMEs. That then knowing the SMEs, because that is the tricky part to actually attract the SMEs. Uh, and then again, the programming is is critical, and again, looks good because you have to have you have to have uh, business cases that sell, uh, and you have to have uh, proposals that sell to the SMEs. Uh, 
so so we can make an attractive offer to the SMEs. That that is the most tricky part of it to get the SMEs on board. Uh, and of course, there there are, there are a lot of lot of um, ideas that you can use. Um, uh, good cases, showing good cases of what other SMEs have su succeeded in before and what we have achieved together. I think that is the most selling part of it, uh, to show the good cases. Uh, but um, established uh, clusters, players, uh, good programming and, and a good network, and this could be done. But the cultural part, um, together with attracting the SMEs, these are the, these are the two main obstacles to, to overcome and to, that we have to win. Interesting. I agree, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so, Erika, uh, what Tobion is mentioning uh, regarding the, the difficulty to attract the SMEs, that it's, uh, it needs uh, some work and, and you need to have good partners to trust to, uh, to engage for the SMEs. Do you have any thoughts about that from your region and the SMEs and projects you have been involved with? How easy and hard is it to attract SMEs and why? I'd say that it's quite difficult, as Tobian said, to, to attract SMEs in, in participating in, in the work that we do. Uh, and we have we try to develop uh, different tools in in this uh, in our region to to make sure that they can participate in different uh, research and and R and D uh, 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 events that we do. Uh, I think that one thing that we discuss now is that uh, we want to uh, explore whether we can actually fund. Uh, in, in, in the format of checks, uh, the SMEs to participate in these different test bed uh, activities because we know that there's, they usually don't uh, have time to participate in, in these kind of events. And we need to basically, I mean, since we're moving into an innovation development that is more and more focusing on, on, on the fail fast uh, environment that you need to make sure that you test your services and you test your new products uh, fast. And a lot of SMEs, they don't do that. They don't have time to do that. So we try see if we can direct them into, by us funding them, uh, they can actually make sure that they can test and be part of this uh, uh, test and experiment environment in an earlier stage. So that's one example that we work with. Uh, but uh, I, I would say that the, the, the other uh, approach that we have, I also agree with Tobion that when we look at the programming for Horizon in the next uh, period, it's also a lot more focusing on, on impact. And uh, I think that uh, by uh, with us that working with the, the, the mission me method, Basically, we, what we try to do is uh, a move from the sector uh, that you are a business, you're a, a, a public authority, you're a, academia, and we try to move and mobilize the actors here and the stake stakeholders here so that everyone can see that uh, they have a certain product or a certain know-how that can be applied to this mission area. And since we work with the healthy oceans and waters. It's around the Baltic Sea that we want to look at how can we actually get stakeholders to uh, involve in the development, which means that you develop your, your own business, your own products, but you also look at how can we apply this in a bigger context for the Baltic Sea and the environment. So I think that in, in our context, it's a very smart tool because what we see if, since we started this work to maybe two years ago, it has an enormous mobilizing effect on, on across sectors in society that they people want to participate in this development. So that's also another very important tool that we work with right now. Interesting, thank you. Uh, Melanie. I was thinking about uh, what Erika is talking about when it comes to uh, being mission-driven and impact-driven. 
And that's easy maybe to speak about when you speak to the specific SME because they have their business and they can add on the sustainability perspective or emission perspective. But uh, when you think about what Rika is talking about, maybe from a wider range, what do you think about this uh, uh, way of working within S3? I think the mission-oriented approach is a really great um, approach to get stakeholders involved into co collaboration because then they have like a vision to follow and they have a com like a concrete goal and everything gets easier to grab and I think it's easier to direct different activities to fulfill this one mission. If it's either SMEs who can do any small small or big things to to yeah to meet this goal or if there's science who uh, focuses on specific topics with, to, to meet the mission and to enrich the scientific world with new insights or to yeah pick up old ones and ref refurb them and also for the institutions in the regions also in the baltic sea region i think it's yeah, it's enabling if you follow a concrete mission, which affects everyone, like sustainability at the moment, for example. It's a great topic, which will uh, join us for the next decades, I guess. So I think it's a good way to make the whole S3 approach more visible and more easy to understand for all stakeholders in the regions and not only for the experts who work with it on a daily basis. Great. Uh, when uh, referring to your research that you've done, Melanie, and your team, um, what would you say, uh, have you identified any key factors for the uh, importance of the continued development of S3? We did, uh, we were able to ident identify um, for example, political similarities in the individual S3 of the regions in the Baltic Sea regions. So we were able to identify, for example, that manufacturing is often mentioned, but we only did the analysis on a holistic um, level, which was like, for example, manufacturing. We didn't look into detail into the different um, sub-levels of those industries. But we were, yeah, we were able to identify that the Baltic Sea region has common uh, dom dom uh, nominators where um, collaboration is, yeah, might be easy to um, to be activated. But there are also a lot of potential um, fields where synergies might apply. For example, in yeah, if one region is really um, highly specialized into manufacturing or ICT, for example then another region is uh, specialized into forestry. There are great synergies for those um, regions to find collaboration potential and to start working uh, together to meet certain goals. Is that if there's innovation in processing or if it's uh, conducting um, product innovation, I guess there are many great um, opportunities to start collaboration, but again, I think it's important to raise um, awareness of these potentials, which is greatly done by the project um, in order to be able to involve actors. And also it was interesting to see that the regions in the Baltic Sea region are, um, there are di there's a different status quo of, um, for example, openness to international um, um, economics. For example, I rem if I remember right, there was one country who has a great history of export imports within the EU, and then there are other countries which are more closed up. And that's why well, that's like I get into my scientific world. It's interesting to see the re uh, the reasons for this. Are there mm -hmm. cultural? Are there economic? Is it legal requirements? So I think there are many many different uh, topics that need to be addressed when looking at S three um, collaboration in the. EU macro regions. Yeah, I think what you are mentioning is interesting uh, earlier when you said that, yeah, maybe one region has uh, this specialization within ICT and the next uh, region uh, has uh, specialization within forestry. 
and between them uh, that could possibly be very interesting synergies. Uh, but Esa, I, I was thinking about this, what Mel Melanie talked about, when it comes to um, how do we motivate and find uh, more interest in collaboration transnationally if we have the same smart specializations within our own country. So for example, in Sweden, you have the bioeconomy as a smart specialization from uh, Yavlebor region and other regions. And then you have the ICT as a smart specialization for Stockholm. Why should uh, the forestry industry in, in mid-Sweden work with uh, ICT cluster in Estonia instead of working with Stockholm because Stockholm is at home. So how do we see that perspective that multiple uh, regions have identical or similar uh, smart specialization and how do we engage them on crossing the border? What do you think about that? Yeah, very, very good question. And uh, also re referring here to, to Björn's uh, uh, comments earlier about the importance of, of, of uh, alliances and uh, uh, strategic alliances and partnerships, finding the right partners. And of course, even though we, of course, we, when we promote EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region or talk about the other instruments like indirect programs or mainstream programs, that, and like Turbjörn also say that we can be very happy and also referring to Jelena's presentation that it's a, a question about how uh, macro regional strategies have uh, are, are are considering and supporting s3 we can be very happy uh, in in bsr our structures are, are are good and overall setup is great it enables the collaboration but that's not enough it's of course it has to be it starts from the first uh like let, let's uh, see the regions first and, and and how they what kind of a strategic choices they make they need to of course also uh have a strategic approach to to uh to innovation policy in general uh, but also to to relate it uh in uh, european and and and, uh, and and other international collaboration and and first of all to think about uh, to to answer your question that is what is the right framework for, for tackling the particular challenge or, or looking at some, some new um, uh, um, uh, opening, some new market opportunities for the companies or, or R&D uh, opportunities. Is it, can, what can we do here locally and regionally with our own, own, uh, own resources? And what can we do in the framework of national collaboration? And then what, uh, what are the uh, challenges and, uh, and the development needs that we should uh, it, it's be our best to tackle and approach with uh, with uh, with European or BSR collaboration, and that's a difficult part. <laughs> that's kind of a the key uh, uh, criteria for the success of, of EUS BSR. First of all, that that it that the that the stakeholders, whether regions or cities, have a strategic approach, and uh, and uh, and strategic means that you that it's. Uh, you have to be also critical that not everything is is, is suitable or should be uh, uh, sold with a transnational or European cooperation. But uh, I still believe that in in the case of of, of a macro region with uh, uh, with basically consisting of small countries, and and uh, and still we have a very strong uh, uh, talent base and and business uh, sectors export driven international companies they are they they are looking for markets and they are uh, from and and uh, from uh, all over europe and and globally and of course the baltic sea region itself is a uh, is uh, is a very important that we are doing a lot of business with each other we are doing uh, research and other collaboration so we have kind of evidence that it makes sense for small countries to join forces and we have realized that they are they are kind of a complementary assets, but to recognize those and it's uh, that why why to when and 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 which cases to turn you should a Finnish region for example should turn and look at Sweden and and when can we uh, solve it nationally? But uh, I, I think that there's so much of uh, unutilized potential 
that in small countries we are already quite like in, in the case of Swedish S3 collaboration that you you are you have excellent coordination and 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 uh, coordination uh, uh, support and and analytical support by Tilbeksperket for for regions on S3 and 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 there are national programs innovation policies and programs but uh we are still young and small EU countries we have a lot of unutilized potential and we are not most of the regions are not getting the share that they could get from the EU funding alone. They, we need more R&D investments. Uh, in case of Finland, there's a big need that uh, in our home region here, that we, we need to be better. We need more R&D uh, uh, um, uh, resources and EU uh, and, and then also US BSR, BSR cooperation is one good platform for that. But our difficult choices, strategic choices should be made uh, there in the in the uh, local and regional level. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we will start to uh, finalize this panel discussion. Uh, I hope you will stick with us. So if people have questions, they can ask you questions in the chat uh, and you can answer them there. But before uh, leaving you and saying thank you for your participation in the panel, I would like you to end this with your best advice for transnational collaboration, uh, just briefly and concisely. So uh, ladies first, Erika, what is your best advice for transnational collaboration? Oh, that's difficult. Uh, <laughs> one advice, I, I think that, I think uh, to to collaborate, I think you need to maybe find what you're collaborating about because collaboration tends to be very sort of fluffy. Uh, so you find the the area where you want to collaborate, and then you you start your work there i think that would be important also that you have to have you have to also have a budget you have to have money to to be able to run networks and and run collaboration and it uh, usually we forget we think that it sort of runs by itself but it doesn't so i think that would be my top advice yeah identifying uh, what you want to collaborate about and having some money for it great uh, melanie What's your advice? Um, I choose uh, visibility and choosing or selecting the relevant stakeholders. I think it's uh, yeah, important to have the right people on board, but also to be visible to and to be open for new partners to join the collaboration and to enrich the whole networking. Great. So um, being visible, meaning uh, telling others about that you want to collaborate and that you are a group that already collaborates and, and uh, being open for others to join. Thank you. Tobian, your advice. I'll be like a parent, I realized. Uh, but, but also, yes, uh, first of all, you have to choose the right partners. That doesn't mean that they have to have the same partners all the time because that's not good either. Uh, so you have to be open to have, to have uh, new ones as well, maybe shift all, uh, out some of the old ones because they'll be around you anyway. Uh, but work with the correct, with, with good partners, uh, efficient partners and, and uh, well-connected partners and, and partners of the right people on board and so on. So choose the right partners. Uh, I would say that is very important. Um, but the most important thing uh, for me, that is to collaborate uh, by doing things, not collaborate by collaborating, <laughs> but for re really doing something. If it's business or if it's research or if it's if it's uh, product development or whatever, uh, but do things together and, and, and bringing the companies in to do things together. Um, that is wide, much, much, much better than just collaborating for collaboration's sake. So your advice is what Elvis Presley would have said, a little less conversation, a little more action. <laughs> yeah. Let's go for Elvis. Esa, your advice. Yeah, now it's uh, easy to refer to, to the title of our uh, panel discussion and, and one element of that, that's strengthening 
uh, cross-border cooperation in um, uh, not just in systemic level but in everyday life that's that's crucial now especially now when we have the structures it's a new program period everything uh, the the structures are there <laughs> instruments are there and now it's about about making it happen and and making it happen so that it's uh, visible in everyday life and that means that we need to get closer to the to the citizens to communities and companies and we need to be much better in engaging them and that applies to to the uh, to this systemic level like like the eu strategy uh, in our activities and in our communication we need to now talk about the 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 actions in 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 and and and, and results where we are aiming at in everyday life and then the regions of course when they make the strategic choices they need to they can best make them by by engaging and 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 engaging the the, the citizens communities and and companies there comes the the need and, and the right choices great connecting with the citizens and companies in everyday life thank you all for for joining us it was very very interesting to listen to you to uh, hear about your experiences thoughts and expertise areas uh, thank you for joining uh, now we will move on for our last uh, speaker in the agenda uh, before we introduce our next speaker, we would just like to show you a short video about tips uh, as an introduction for the next speaker as well. So uh, let's see if we can get that uh, video started. Just a second now. Great, there you saw our prom promotion video for tips and some good examples of uh, what we discussed earlier, how to engage uh, SMEs in everyday life to get them to uh, collaborate internationally with other actors in different uh, regions with the different focus in smart specialization. Uh, so now I would like to hand over the world to one of our dear project members, 
Robert Gierko. Robert is an innovation and internationalization expert at the Bialystok University of Technology. He will tell you about the project Go Smart Excel BSR in brief, and also about the concept tips that is developed uh, within the project. Robert, please take us away on this journey. Uh, Erwin, thank you very much. Uh, I've been listening to the conversations beforehand and the presentations, and it's a world of uh, interesting ideas and experiences. And I think we, as the Go, Go Smart and Excel BSR project now, are one of the contributors to these ideas and to the conversation, let's say. Uh, just to sort of uh, simply explain our position, viewpoint, and takeaways from our project, I would like to share my screen with you and um, basically just a few slides. So my speech is with some visual, which always helps to get the ideas through. Um, what I want to speak about is about, uh, is to speak about to you shortly is the Trans S3 method and the TIPS system that has been already discussed and also presented through the video, but I want to take a, a slightly different uh, approach to this. Uh, first of all, what I wanted to sort of uh, say is that we are one of the, let's say, building bricks for the new reality that seems to me, which is inspired by the smart uh, specialization strategy approach. And where we came uh, with the BSR, with this uh, Go Smart and Excel project, I mean, Go Smart previously, now Go Smart and Excel as an extension uh, to the table is that we uh, understood or we believe as, as partner project partnership that the S3 concept does provide a fresh and a promising approach to policy, specifically policy making for the for growth and, and innovation and um, sustainability, uh, you know, uh, considering the current challenges, global challenges, it seems very appropriate and very uh, much encouraging to use it. Uh, what we also understand, and I think you would agree, is that um, smart specializations, maybe not the strategies, but smart specializations themselves, they are basically um, real uh, stuff. They are uh, expressed by um, developed less or more, but specialized clusters, which combine the quadruple helix um, partners, actors, in providing value, uh, competitive value uh, to, you know, to the world, uh, starting from locality, region, country, etc. And our assumption was the following. If uh, clusters develop naturally, locally, regionally, nationally, and across borders, then the um, S3 um, has to find application also at these various geographical levels. Uh, with having the, let's say, the background of understanding that whatever we do under S3 is really uh, oriented towards higher global competitiveness of these, uh, let's call them networks, um, through specialization, uh, cooperation and competition, so competition, that leads, leads to towards uh, globalization and, uh, and our participation in the global processes. Of course, we know that globalization does not come without risks and without costs, uh, but overall, uh, the benefits have proven uh, on the whole, you know, global scale to be more than the, uh, the costs. Uh, and how did we do that? Uh, we went into uh, applying the general S3 method to uh, something which we understand as a non-uniform geographic area. Uh, in our first, uh, first attempt uh, in 2019, we developed the trans S3 strategy for a group of uh, uh, regions from the Baltic Sea region, but only uh, some of them. Uh, and currently we are in the process of developing the trans S3 strategy for the whole EU BSR, um, you know, gang of countries um, that are there. Uh, and when I say trans S3 strategy, it does not mean that there has to be a strategy document. The format could be 
uh, whatever, a plan, a program, uh, an initiative, etc. But what is important, we are trying to follow uh, what we developed or expanded in terms of method, uh, a five sequence uh, a schedule, uh, which basically uh, mirrors the, uh, the, the, the standard S3 approach, but puts uh, quite a bit of stress on the aspects of internationalization potential, uh, which is reflective of the overall idea of S3, so becoming uh, internationally, globally more competitive. And I will not go into the uh, details uh, because details you can find uh, in uh, so far two important project publications. One is about the method that we proposed and that we tested in 2019, uh, available on our webpage. And the most recent one from this year, actually, I think it was uh, published last month, um, is the technical report towards the smart specialization strategy for the Baltic Sea region uh, that is still under uh, making. And now we're, we are in the process of uh, regional and national consultations and feedback. Uh, so trying to sort of discover in an entrepreneurial uh, discovery process, what should be the priorities and domains for the BSR uh, region as a whole. And of course, uh, what we propose is to um, you know, develop or to consider working out these trans S3 uh, strategies uh, for the macro regions of the EU as a, let's say, follow-up step. So um, consequently, Baltic Sea region has been the, the first one to have uh, an EU strategy approved, recognized, uh, but we have others in, in the line which could use the same experience and maybe, you know, take it even further such as the Danube region, Adriatic and Ionian uh, Sea region, or the um, Alpine region. Uh, these uh, these uh, have strategies, but not necessarily, uh, you know, elements or uh, let's say um, frameworks, which would capture the, the approach and the benefit of uh, looking through the S3 lenses. So this is an invitation for uh, learning uh, together with us and moving uh, with the uh, S3 uh, concept, you know, into different, uh, let's say, uh, levels. Uh, not always easy because you, you, I mean, we all understand that macro regions do not necessarily have um, homogenic uh, components. Uh, they, they are different nationalities, different areas, different industries, and uh, overall different socioeconomic structures. Uh, plus cultural elements, and that was already mentioned. But moving on, we looked at it also from a different perspective, and we said, okay, if uh, if you know if we can move up to transnational S threes, then what happens at the micro level? Uh, I do believe that also uh, SMEs or enterprises they can develop their smart strategies uh, for themselves and contribute to the larger um, scale effects. And what we've developed in the, in the last few years uh, is the what we call transnational innovation brokerage system. Um, how it works and that it works, it has been already, let's say, stated, but just a snapshot, we move companies, SMEs, from the involved uh, regions that are served by our project partners through, uh, let's say, recruitment assessment and co-creation of innovation agendas. Uh, we basically define together working with the companies, with SMEs, what should be their um, you know, uh, nearest innovation projects for which then they would consider collaborating across borders or collaborating internationally. And the next step obviously then is to match the client SMEs with international innovation partners be it other SMEs, be it large companies, be it uh, research and academia, or um, some other structures that can help them innovate. And the final stage is to, um, you know, complement the, the client SME and their partners in actually implementing something that we call an innovation project, international innovation project, small or large, uh, which we sort of coined as joint transnational smart strategies at the SME or at the micro level. 
And uh, why I, I would say that TIPS works is, uh, I mean, the proof is in, in, the, in, the, in the books. Uh, yesterday, we had a very lively uh, conversation and, and workshop uh, in Podlaski region, which is one of the partners, uh, Northeast Poland. And basically, it, you know, TIPS has been showing results, bringing innovations uh, which are of international nature and character into low tech, high tech, ecological, uh, super innovative areas. I mean, uh, it, it's really encouraging to see numbers growing and also the, the topics growing. And you saw some of the examples, uh, you know, without sort of uh, names uh, in the promotion video, but I think the testimonials of the clients are very powerful and we have experienced them across the board, you know, from uh, one broker to another broker, from one country to another country, region by region. And we see that it is working. And it, you know, this, this is an area which is, uh, I would say, twice as uh, challenging as normal support to SMEs, because what we are trying to do is to work with them on innovations plus uh, with international partners. And you can imagine that for an SME, uh, which is, let's say, semi-prepared to be, to be internationalizing, these are super hard challenges. So I do commend those who, who take part and who, who deliver the services, but also the users of the services. Uh, nevertheless, what I wanted to do is also sort of uh, make a small pitch for those of you who represent business support organizations from the BSR region, but also beyond because we are now at the stage of growing the, the, the network and expanding the service usage of the method. And this is basically my last slide where I want to uh, tell you that uh, there is a possibility to consider, we are not forcing anybody, but to consider to explore the, the, the possibilities of um, what tips could offer to your local, regional, national SMEs and uh, where you could be involved as a business support organization of whatever type. And there's, I mean, we prepared a number of packages. You see them with different colors, which are basically induction training offers from us. Uh, of course, free of charge because it is uh, financed from Interreg uh, program. Uh, so there is induction package, which are packages, which are num number one, short-term placements with the existing tips providers, either physical or online and they will be taking place in the la last two months of this year. Uh, you, you see the deadlines. Then we have the second package, which is a specialized training taking place towards the end of November uh, in Brussels. Uh, but if you want to participate in person, you really need to hurry because the deadline is 5th of November, uh, which means you should uh, uh, fill out our survey, short survey before that date, because uh, the process is such that First you fill out the survey, then you obtain uh, an invitation from us and you sign a declaration of interest and then you can uh, take part. And then there is the last package, which is basically uh, self-training online uh, support with some possible connection with the existing brokers to sort of understand how the system works. And here the deadline is a bit softer, longer, so you can consider, you know, a bit, ponder a bit more. But uh, what I would like to say is that definitely uh, we see, uh, I would say, structural change. And, you know, from the perspective of less developed regions of um, eastern, uh, eastern part of the Baltic Sea uh, or southern and eastern part, uh, we see that there is a growing um, confidence and also that there is a, a change of attitude and change of uh, um, willingness to engage internationally. When we started playing with smart strategies, with smart uh, specialization strategies in 2014-15, uh, basically nobody, nobody was ready and it was really hard to even get people, uh, you know, talking between among industry, uh, uh, um, talking real business, let's say, between industry, academia, uh, public authorities, etc. Uh, today, what we see and what we experience is a full understanding that this is a way forward and that, you know, seeking international partners, even for startup SMEs, is a, a platform to jump and to expand. Uh, so I will not take more time. Uh, I will send you the link to the survey 
uh, through the chat here. But otherwise, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I close the uh, presentation now. Stop sharing. And I'm ready to take any questions if there is still time. Uh, the link to the survey is already in, in the chat. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Robert. Uh, so for all of you participating in this uh, event, and if you work as some type of business advisor or innovation advisor or have contact with SMEs in your everyday work, supporting them, uh, this could be an interesting option to uh, join uh, TIBS and uh, go through the training and learning more and use the, the method for supporting uh, SMEs with their development. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat, but I see that you have been uh, very active and that's, uh, that's making us happy that there's interaction going on uh, during the event between the attendees. Um, so we have reached the end of this day. Uh, I would just like to thank all of you speakers who have attended and given us your time and knowledge uh, shared during this event. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all for participating for this international conference on transnational collaboration with the S3 Focus. Uh, I would like uh, just to add that if you have any questions and would like to know more about the Go Smart and Excel project and uh, or TIBS, please visit our website for this project or uh, reach out to us who are involved in this project. Uh, thank you all and have a nice day.